What's up guys, War History Geek here, and welcome back to another video. Um, now I bet it's been a little bit while since I've done my last haul video. Um, it's also been a while since I've just posted a video in general. Uh, I've been very busy lately. I have, have uh, school, of course, and a lot of other things going on in my life, so I don't have a lot of time to um, spend on this hobby, unfortunately, uh, but I am doing my best to keep up with uploads. Um, also, I'd just like to start off the video with thanking all of you guys. Uh, we recently surpassed 50 subscribers, um, which is just, it doesn't sound like a lot now, but it really does mean a lot to me personally. I'm glad that other people enjoy this hobby and um, like my channel so much that they're willing to subscribe and watch my future content. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, now, after that intro, let's just get right into the video. So one of the more recent items I've purchased is this book here and it's the uh it's a book about every steel helmet used by the finnish defense forces um from pre-world war one until i believe the early 90s when their first um kevlar helmet came out it's a very nice book it was only published in finland however so the majority of the book is in finnish uh, they do offer a quick English summary in the back, however it offers nowhere as much detail as the entire book. Uh, so I purchased this on eBay for about $30, which I thought was a pretty good deal. They're pretty hard to find in the States, um, and when you do they're usually pretty expensive, so I thought that was a very fair price. Um, and yeah, so it's a very nice book. I'm currently translating the whole thing into English so that I have all the detail. As you can see there, it goes through all the different helmets ever used by the Finnish Armed Forces. And I bought this to do research for a video. So if you guys are interested in um, seeing more about this book, feel free to let me know. But yes, if you're interested in learning about Finnish steel helmets, this is the book you need to buy. It's a very, very useful book. Tons of information that you won't find anywhere else. Uh, now the next item here is a large piece of original World War II U.S. parachute material. Um, now, I bought this at one of the vendors at the D-Day or D-Day Conneaut, Ohio reenactment. I was involved in that. Um, if any of you guys were there, I was in with the um, ROA unit. And yeah, it's, so it's just a large piece of camouflage fabric from a U.S. parachute. I believe it was only five dollars for this piece so an excellent price usually you see them for a lot expensive or a lot more expensive with a uh, lot smaller of a piece so this was a really nice piece i'm not going to unfold the whole thing um because you know there's no point in doing that but i'm going to use this for my uh Fallschirmjäger impression uh it's seen a lot of times especially in the normandy area they would take pieces of uh camouflage uh, fabric from U.S. parachutes and use them as scarves in their uniforms. Uh, so that's what this is going to be for. It also makes a really nice display piece when I'm not using it for reenacting. Uh, next up here, I'll save that book for a little bit, um, we have a small collection of items I got at my local flea market a couple weeks back. Uh, now this first one here is a book by James W. Garrard. Uh, titled My Four Years in Germany. I believe it was published in... Let's see here. I believe it was 1917, 1918, somewhere in there. Let's see. Yep, there we go. Copyright, 1917. So, it's a very interesting book. Unfortunately, I have not had a chance to read it yet. Um, but James W. Garrard was the ambassador to Germany um in the years leading up to world war one that was his four years leading up to the outbreak of the war uh so this was be this would be a very very interesting perspective of his um so i'm really looking forward to having a chance to read this um it, like i said i don't really have much to say about it yet because of course i didn't get a chance to read it um but i like i said i'm definitely looking forward to it i think it's going to be very interesting i really enjoy reading books published during or immediately after um, the World Wars. I think they have a very interesting perspective that you can't get from anywhere else. Um, and then next up here, we have a collection of photographs. Uh, now, these I found in a big box, probably purchased at an estate sale. Um, I paid a couple dollars a piece, if that. I think I paid $5 for all three of these. 
Here we have a dress photo. Very cool there. Um, I did look up what the unit was at the time of purchase. Um, I can go ahead and put it down here or pop it up here, whatever I want, add a picture of what the unit was. Um, but of course, it's a World War II dress photo of a U.S. soldier. And um, whenever I find these, I always purchase them because, you know, it's military. It counts. I don't want to leave it behind. Um, but I just like to mention when I find photographs like this. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. There was a bird knocking on my window outside. Uh, but anyway, what I was saying, whenever I do find photographs like this, it's uh, really saddening, to be honest with you. Some of these photographs were some of the most cherished items that these couples or people had in their lives. And uh, I'm sure they hope to be able to pass it down a family line and continue to have it be a cherished item. And to find stuff like this at a flea market for like a dollar a piece in a box full of miscellaneous stuff is just really saddening. Um, but I'm glad that myself and other people that are interested in the hobby exist so that we can go along and find these give them a good home again, and cherish them like I'm sure the original owners did. So anyway, this was the first picture here. Uh, moving on to the next one. This one's interesting. Uh, the binding is in not great condition, as you can see here on the edge. Uh, but again, it was only like a dollar or two. And then inside here, you can see this probably sat open on a cabinet or something. You can see a uh, U.S. soldier here. And then probably his wife over there. So again, a very interesting piece. Um, World War II era photographs. Um, not much to talk about, to be honest with you. Just a very cool piece again. I love buying old photographs like this. Unfortunately, it looks like the glass did get shattered in this one. Uh, however, nonetheless, it's still very cool. And then the last one here. I actually had to uh, take apart and pretty it up a little bit. Here we have a picture of a, a U.S. serviceman in the original frame from the 1940s. So, very cool there. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so a very interesting piece. Um, again, this one was very cool with the frames, with it still being in its original frame. Um, and it's another World War II serviceman dress uh, in his dress uniform. So, he likely saw uh, combat, and again, this probably would have sat in a house for many years um, cherished by the family, and then unfortunately it ended up in the flea market. Um, but once again, I came along and picked it up to help preserve this history. Uh, so that was all from that flea market there. The last item here, or uh, second to last item, is a ration book collection. I found this on Facebook Marketplace for 20 bucks, free shipping, and I pretty much immediately jumped on that. That was a really great deal for something like this. Um, you rarely see these books. Oh, and while I have this, um, this is a signature album from the late 1800s, early 1900s that the seller threw in for free. All handwritten notes in here. This one's dated 1899 and so forth, uh, 1911. So all pre-World War I, very interesting. Um, so I'll throw that in the collection somewhere. But anyway, so this would have been a family's ration book keeper um, on the home front. And very rarely will you find complete sets of these. And you'll see in a moment complete sheets of ration stamps. Um, these were almost always used. Um, maybe they were kept in a photo album or something, but most of the time they were thrown away. Um, but this is a complete untouched set. So I was very happy to see this um, pop up and I jumped on it. So here we have a paper that was cut off from a canning sugar coupon. So this one was used. Um, very cool there. You can see a description of why we must uh, get along with less sugar. And uh, here you can see it was Mrs. Oliver B. Ferguson in Salina, Kansas that had this. Um, so that's a very cool piece of paperwork. And then these are all ration books. So here you can see ration book three, of course, same family. And these are all complete sheets of ration stamps, which you do not see very often, as I've said before now. Um, some of them are just completely untouched books like these. And others do have a couple torn out of them. Um, but again, I mean, they're still in incredible condition. 
So I was very pleased to find this. This is going to make a great addition to my home front collection. Um, now, they all look pretty much the same, so I'm not going to uh, go through every little detail with those, but um, I'm going to get this cleaned up, and I'm going to show you the last item. See you then. All right, guys, and I'm back with the last item. I'm sure you recognize my original Waffen SS combat helmet, um, but I recently decided to buy a display case for it. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't fit exactly where I wanted it to go, so I'm going to have to uh, fumble around with my displays and see where it's going to fit exactly. Um, but I knew it was important to buy something to protect this helmet. It's an extremely valuable and important helmet, and I just had it sitting out on an open-air shelf, and I wanted to put it somewhere where it could be protected. Um, now, if you're interested in this case, this is just the, uh, the football helmet case that's sold at Hobby Lobby. Um, I got it during the 50% off sale, so yeah, if you guys want to buy this uh, helmet case for one of your own helmets, that's where I got mine. Alright, that's all I have for this video. Um, if you liked it, make sure to hit the like button, and when you're in that area, hit the subscription button and notification bell. I have plenty of other videos coming in the near future just like this, so stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!